Hi everyone, this is Matt Tu's show with Intro Stats. In our last video we looked at the idea of introducing test statistics. So test statistics, we were introducing test statistics and we said that to determine if the test statistic tells you if the sample data significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis, we needed to um, sort of see if the test statistic fell in the tail determined by the critical value. So we've done critical value calculations before on StatKey, but I wanted to show you how it's a little bit different for hypothesis tests than it is for um, uh, confidence intervals. With hypothesis tests, again, you have to sort of know, is it a right-tailed test or a left-tailed test or a two-tailed test? And of course, what distribution you're dealing with. And of course, the main thing is what significance level are you using? So we said last time the significance levels are the opposite of the confidence levels. Okay, so in our example uh, uh, intro test statistic video, when I was kind of going through some of the ideas, our first example uh, had a significance level of 5%. Uh, the T uh, test statistic and it was two-tailed. So how did I get those critical values? Well, again, I would go to theoretical distribution and I would click T, right? Anytime you want to look up a critical value for either a confidence interval or a hypothesis test, just go to th the theoretical distributions and you can look it up. So here's T. Now it is going to ask me what my degrees of freedom was. In this case, uh, in the example that I did in the last video, it was 29. So I'm going to put in 29 and push OK. And now I get the T curve for a degrees of freedom 29. Now this was a two-tailed test with a significance level of 5%. So we want to click two-tail. Now, if this was a right tail test, I would put 0.05 in over here. If it was a left tail test, uh, but this is a two-tailed test, so I have to break up the 5% significance level into two tails. In fact, this is the default one, um, actually is the correct. So if you break up 5% into two tails, you'll get 0 0.025 or 2.5% in each tail. So this is actually exactly what I need. Notice where do the tails begin? Positive 2.045, that's where the right tail begins, and negative 2.045. If I was doing this on a program like Statcato, it would just say critical values plus or minus 2.045. But notice that I can use StatKey to look them up. Some computer programs actually do not give you critical values, which um, I always felt was kind of weird, and especially if we want to determine, uh, sort of understand our test statistic, it's always good to have a critical value to compare it to. So we saw in that example that the um, test statistic was 2.571, and when that falls over here, so it is in the tail. So in that example, uh, this would mean that the sample data does significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. Now in example two, we looked at a z-score test statistic with a left tail test. So in stat key, if I want to look up a z-score critical value, it's under theoretical distributions normal. Okay, anytime you see normal, think z-scores. So a z-score test statistic, we're going to use the critical value for, well, we're going to use the normal button. So I'm going to click on that. Now they said it was a left tail test, so I'm going to put point left tail. Now they said the significance level that the scientist was using was 1% or 0 0.01. In a left tail test, you have to put the complete significance level in the left tail. So 0 0.01 now is going to be in the left tail. Now that, where that tail starts is the critical value. So here's my z-score critical value that I can compare my test statistic to. So this is how I got that number uh, that we were using in the example in the last video. So the, the critical value was negative 2.327. Now the test statistic was negative 1.173. So we see negative 1 is over here, right? It's not in the tail. That means my sample data um, does, uh, disagrees a little bit with the null hypothesis, but not significantly. So this is a not significant disagreement. Okay, it's probably, and any disagreement we have is probably just due to sampling variability. All right, the third example in our last video was uh, using a chi-square uh, test statistic. So let's do that. So if I want to look up the critical value for a chi-squared test statistic, I'll go to theoretical distribution, chi-squared. 
So it looks like a kind of looks like an x squared, but it's actually the Greek letter chi, chi squared. So you click on that. Now this was a uh, they're going to ask you degrees of freedom. In the in the last example, we used a four degrees of freedom. So we're going to put in four there. And there's the chi square curve. We see it's actually very skewed right. That's kind of what chi squares tend. They're not normal distributions. They're they tend to be squared numbers added up. Also, they don't, you don't see any negatives. The lowest it goes is zero. It's because it's squared numbers added up. <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't really go to negative. So um, now, where is my critical value? All right, well, they said that this was a right tail test with a significance level of 10%. So I'm going to click right tail. And then the percentage in the right tail should be the significance level. I don't have to break the significance level into two tails because this is just a one-tailed hypothesis test. So I'll put 0 0.10 or 0 0.1 in the right tail. That's 10%. So this is my right tail, and this is where the tail starts. So here's my chi-square critical value. This is the number you compare your test statistic to. And again, our goal is to see does our test statistic fall in the tail or is it not in the tail? Right. Well, in our example in the last uh, video, we saw that the chi-square test statistic was 11.328. Well, 11.328 is about right in here. So definitely in the tail. Definitely bigger than our 7.79. It's in the tail. So again, our sample data does significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. And it's probably gone beyond what we would expect just by sampling variability. Remember, the key idea here, sample data always, almost always disagrees with the null hypothesis. It's just a matter of does it significantly disagree. Being in the tail shows us that it significantly disagrees. That's a really key idea when you're reading test statistics. Okay, now just to show you, um, you know, in terms of what does it look like on most computer programs, if, you, if, you, if they give you a critical value, let's take a look at StatCato real quick. Now this was some body temperature data that I got off of StatKey. And again, I was testing it versus the claim that uh, normal body temperature um, is 98.6 degrees. 98.6 degrees is, does this disagree with that? Um, I think in my Nolan alternative hypothesis example video, we, we did this example with body temperature and we said the null hypothesis was that it was 98.6 degrees and the alternative hypothesis was less than 98.6 degrees. Many scientists think that normal body temperature is less than 98.6 but the null hypothesis was equal to 98.6. So let's take a look. Now every time we do you learn a new hypothesis test I'll go over a video with with using StatCato and how, how what to click on but this was basically a one population mean hypothesis test. So I would go to statistics hypothesis test one population mean. My, I have summary data. My sample was in column one, so I'm just going to type that. And again, um, I'm going to go ahead and use a 5% significance level here. And, uh, and then uh, notice again, it says hypothesized mean. That's the number that was in the null hypothesis. So this was 98.6. And I'm going to go ahead and do a less than or a left tail test. If I push OK, and you see there in the printout, here's the null and alternative hypothesis written nicely for us. And you notice they're using the t-distribution. Here's the test statistic, negative 3.141. Here's the critical value. So that's the, where the tail starts. So if it's a left-tailed test, the left tail is starting at negative 1.677. And then I have to draw a picture and imagine in my head where does the test statistic fall? Is it lower, less than negative 1.677 or higher? Remember, in negative numbers, the more you go to the left, right, the more negative it gets. So negative 3 would definitely be to the left of negative 1.677 on the number line. So in a left-tailed test, this test statistic is actually falling in the tail. So the sample data, this sample data, does significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. In fact, I can see that my sample mean was actually 98.26, and that is a significantly lower than the 98.6 in the null hypothesis. So that's kind of the idea of how to use a test statistic. Usually you get a printout like this, look at the test statistic, draw a picture, kind of see where your tail falls. Remember, your tail is going to start at the critical value. 
and then determine if your test statistic falls in the tail or not. Okay? So this is how most uh, a lot of printouts look. All right, so that is uh, um, using stack key and stack Cato to um, to get critical values and to understand our test statistics for um, hypothesis tests. All right, this is Matt Touche and Intro Stats, and I will see you next time.